Welcome, Buff fans. I'm uh, pleased to be joined by Jake Schwanitz of DNVR um, as we uh, kind of ramp up to spring ball, Jake. And, um, you know, we were just talking beforehand that it's been sort of a long off season. In some ways, it's feeling like it's gone quick, but, you know, we haven't uh, really talked to anybody with the team, you know, a whole lot since uh, the Utah game. And, and we're I think we're ready to, right? I, I hope so, man. It's been a long off season. Uh, I need football back in my life, so. Yeah, and, you know, for spring ball, you know, we typically don't get to see a lot of it, but I think just being around the program is going to be a, a lot of fun and energize all of us just kind of, you know, getting to meet some of these new guys. And and that's where, you know, I want to talk. I want to spend the time with you is talking about some of these new guys is um, certainly the the transfer list is not as big as it was last year. I know it's going to get bigger after spring ball, but um, it's a smaller group that we had last year uh, coming in, but um, it's still an impactful group and maybe a more impactful group than, than what last year was. And so that's what we want to talk about. It's like, who are going to be the most impactful transfers? And um, Jake, I want to start with, I was recently asked a question by a Pac-12 writer um, said, help me out. You know, who are the most impactful transfers on each side of the ball? And so I gave my answer. Here's one guy on defense. Here's one guy on offense. If I had to pick them, um, I'm not going to give you my answer yet. So I want to ask you first, who would you say most impactful transfer on defense? We'll go, we'll go deeper than this, but who was one on offense, one on defense. Starting offensively. I think I got to go with Lejonte Wester. Um, just how Shador recruited him to Boulder in the off season that stood out to me. I mean, Shador was recruited to yeah. FAU at one point during his 2020 recruitment or 2021 recruitment. Lejonte had already played a season there. So I think there were plans for them to kind of link up at some point. Um, he entered the portal. Shador obviously made his case known and stated that he really wanted LeJonte and Boulder. Now they finally get to play together. Um, I just think that he's so explosive out of the slot. I think he could be a big play threat from anywhere on the field. Defensively, I got to go in the trenches. Uh, I got to go Chidoze Nwankwo, uh, really a fire hydrant, maybe slightly undersized in terms of height, but you know, at 300 pounds and he kind of has that leverage advantage because of his height and he should be able to really help out CU's linebackers and flowing to the run game better and not allowing so many runs to get past the second level like they did last year. So I'll leave you with those two. Yeah. I like that you have different answers than I had because uh, um, I think there are going to be different answers because there's gonna be multiple guys, but I like both your answers. Um, I went on offense. I went Justin Mayers um, only because, you know, I love the receiver, you know, Will Shepard, Lejante Wester, but Offensive line is such a position of need and a group of need. And to me, Justin's the the top group of those transfers they brought in. Just what he did at UTEP, um, I'm impressed with him. Um, he was the guy I went with on offense. And then on defense, I also stayed in the trenches, but I went B.J. Green, um, who I think was just a beast as Arizona State. And, you know, I think they need that. I mean, they need that guy that, that uh, can get to the quarterback, that can stuff the run. And, uh, you know, BJ was impressive, you know, at Arizona State. And, you know, so is Chidozi. You know, I think there's a lot of these guys on there. And so um, that's who I went with. But um, that's a good, you know, foursome to start with because I think there's going to be a lot of these guys. So um, let's just kind of continue from there. Like, who are some other guys you're excited about? Not necessarily guys that will be here in the spring, but just overall guys that we know are coming. Great question. I mean, BJ's up there for sure. Definitely hasn't showed up on campus yet. And that's really something that CU's lacked. I mean, you could tell me more, or you could say more than I can, but they haven't had a true like ace pass rusher in a long, long time. Yeah. And BJ Green has really grown into that, you know, starting off as a freshman walk on player. So I'm excited for him. I'm excited for all the edge rushers. I mean, Oak and Lola, Wiggins, I think that they really improved that edge rushing group. But to, you know, we both kind of picked trench players and that's where the Colorado needed help right. the most, you know? So I totally understand the Justin Mayer's pick. He seems to me just in the videos we've seen from uh, their content teams, he seems to really has emerged as a leader um, and just someone who has Shador's trust already. And we know that's huge with Shador and he's going to line up probably right next to Jordan Seaton, who was probably the biggest overall addition this off season. So the benefits of getting, you know, just these 22, 23 year old guys, to play in the trenches is going to be massive for this team on both sides of the ball, really. So I can't argue with your picks at all. You know, every time I write about the offensive line, I keep going back to this this article that The Athletic did back in December where they talked to anonymous coaches, which is kind of what they like to do. And uh, yeah. do you remember this article where there was a coach quote in there and says, I don't know how the hell you're going to get a whole offensive line in one offseason. 
And then in three days in like early January or late December, they get like six transfer offensive linemen. One end up going to Oregon, but um, it was like mm-hmm. six transfer offensive linemen and Jordan Seaton commits. It's like, you just got a whole offensive line in three days. And I, I it was, I keep going back to that. It, it just makes me laugh that, you know, you, you can't get a whole offensive line now. I don't know how good they're going to be, but they certainly got a new one. And I think that's such a key to this team is how good is that group going to be? But I think it's exciting because it is a new group and um, you know, this is not to knock the people that were playing the offensive line because I liked Jack Bailey and Van Wells and, you know, Tank seemed like a nice kid, all those things. But as a unit, they weren't very good. And, you know, we we need to see a better unit. And so I think that's what's exciting about this offense is it's totally brand new. They wiped the slate clean, and here's a bunch of new guys. Definitely. And, you know, with that, the guards really seem like the weakest positions on that offensive line last year. Yeah. Just so much pressure right up the middle in Shador's face. And so that's what they did. They went and got people, you know, Justin Mayers, who we talked about, uh, Tyler Johnson, too, who kind of has a nastiness streak to him. And that's something the offensive line missed last year. So just improving at those positions. And, man, you know, you talk about building an offensive line in the portal and how, you know, coaches were doubtful. It just shows that college football really is changing because the portal just keeps growing and growing and growing. And we saw how much it grew over last year. So the quality of player you're getting is just much better than all these coaches are used to seeing in the portal. And, you know, Coach Prime, we know his recruiting ability. So and the biggest need was the offensive line. These guys saw that they knew they could come in, start right away. And they knew that's exactly what Colorado needed to, you know, get back on the trajectory that they want to be on. So it's an exciting time. It's a different time, but uh, I'm really excited to see how it works out. And I know we're talking just about transfers, but I also want to add on offensive line. Um, Savion Washington is still here. I love that because I thought he was their best offensive lineman when healthy. We did not see a healthy Savion on the last uh, half yeah. of last year. And Tyler Brown is back. Those are two guys that were brought in last year that are going to compete. And it's not going to be easy for those uh, new guys coming in to win those starting jobs because um, I think a healthy Savion, a healthy Tyler Brown, absolutely push for starting jobs. And the competition, I think it's going to be better than it was last year because of the transfers. Absolutely. And then you got to factor in Phil Lodeholt too. This is yep. a guy with NFL playing experience, you know, kind of a, a younger like coach when it comes to his coaching experience. But you you see what Coach Prime's trying to build here with the NFL atmosphere, the NFL tutelage. So um, I, I have high hopes for this offensive line. You know, I'm not going to expect them to be, you know, in contention for the Joe Moore Award this year, I don't think. I mean, yeah. barring a miraculous season, but this is going to be a greatly improved offensive line. I think they'll be able to run the ball better. I think they'll be more nasty, which you're going to have to be in the Big 12. That's kind of what that conference is built on. Um, so, you know, all, all that to say they have added all over the field, though. I mean, you know, you got two wide receivers. You got a couple of freshmen who aren't even on campus yet who are going to play wide receiver. Added to that secondary, too, linebackers, which we needed as well. So there's additions all over the field. I mean, kind of like how you said, you can really point to any one of a group of 15 transfers and say they'll be the most impactful. Yeah. And there's even some receivers that haven't done much yet in college that could be exciting. Cordell Russell and uh, Terrell Timmons are guys that, you know, uh, you know, uh, Russell was a true freshman last year at TCU. Didn't play a whole lot. Timmons uh, has been a back of it. Um, NC state. So I'm excited about those guys as well. And so um, if you're Shador Sanders, you know, uh, obviously his dad was looking to, you know, build up things around him and, you know, Neely and I talked about this once that, um, you know, people look at that and say, oh, he's just helping out his son. Well, yes, because his son's the quarterback. And that's what <laughs> coaches do is they help their quarterback. Forget the father-son thing. You want, if you have a generational quarterback, you want to help him out. That's what they've done, right? They've got offensive linemen. They've got new receivers. And that's on top of they've Jimmy Horn's back. Travis Hunter's back. They got good receivers back. Shimon Mateer is a guy that uh, I'm excited about. They have a real tight end finally. Um, for the first time under under Coach Prime, and um, I'm I'm curious to see what you know some of the you know like Savelle Smalls does in that area. But Shaman Mateer, um is a transfer coming in that uh, you know, caught 23 passes at Cincinnati. He can block, so you have a real tight end. You have that, and you know we're only talking about the passing game, but all these additions, I think it's really going to help out the running game. You know, you mentioned guys like Savelle Smalls. I think Morgan Pearson also switched over to tight end, so. Yep. You know, they're they're getting a bit younger in the back end there. You know, you have Shaman Mateo as your true, like, Y starter. Yeah. Um, but you have two guys who are just bigger bodies. I think they'll be able to go into bigger personnel packages 
and really try and bully the ball down people's throats, which is something, you know, other than the TCU game on the goal line that they didn't do last year. So having a healthy Alton McCaskill back as well, um, and just kind of refining those pass run splits, you know, giving Shador a break on that end, I think is also going to be beneficial to the entire team, not just the offense and Shador. So it, it's it's really so much, and it's kind of a similar situation to last year where you can't quantify it, even through the spring period. I mean, they're just going against each other. We're not really going to know exactly how everything kind of fits together and works out until week one. But um, as you mentioned, the talent has been increased immensely. The guys that they brought in through the portal are much better than they brought in last year. You know, they're not reaching into the G5 and the FBS now. They're getting guys who are playing power five football or playing at a high level in the G5. So um, it's all coming together, I think. Uh, it's just got to, you know, really work out on the field. Yeah, and I can't remember if it was in the Netflix documentary or not Netflix, the the Amazon Prime documentary or um, another video I saw. But you know, Prime was talking about this was, I think it was the documentary where he was uh, maybe riding in the car with Andre Hart. They were talking about uh, transfers and and Coach Prime was like, "We need starters this year." And mm -hmm. he's told us last year we just kind of grabbed whatever we could grab, and now this year it's like we know what we need. Let's go get it. What I've loved about this group so far, and you pointed it out, is. Last year, they were uh, getting a bunch of guys that were G5 guys, or if they were coming from the FBS or Power 5 levels, they were guys that weren't playing. This year, mm -hmm. they've got FBS starters, you know, yes. and he's got guys that, are, that have experience now at the highest level. And, you know, people people kind of got on us a little bit because I last year because I would talk about, well, it's a big jump from FCS to FBS. And they said, well, they can play football. Well, We've seen it before that guys struggle with that. And we saw a little bit last year. And so I think it's important that they're getting guys that have played FBS football. Um, and even guys like, uh, we'll transition over defense with this, but um, guys like, uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out which Wade brother plays uh, uh, defense. Or which yeah, uh, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So like, he's a guy that was not a starter at Kentucky, but I right. love him. <laughs> you know, that's a guy mm -hmm. that uh, can be a really impactful player here. And so um, I, I just like the, the quality of transfers they've got this year. You talk about guys like Sam Lola and Quincy Wiggins, who also played at power five levels, didn't start, but um, there's some promising signs. I mean, Quincy Wiggins was the top recruit out of the state. I mean, he was a four star out of LSU. He was just, you know, kind of lost in the shuffle in that stacked uh, edge room. And Sam Lola is a guy who, I mean, I'm sure you remember he visited Colorado back in the day. He was considering yep. Colorado in the, in his recruitment. He goes out, as a freshman at Pitt and in very limited playing time shows some impressive stats. I think he had five sacks or something too. So it's, it's just improved across the board. Like the, the type of player they're getting someone like Preston Hodge. This is one of the top cornerbacks, if not the best cornerback in all of G five and Liberty was a top 25 team throughout last season. So, you know, these are high quality players that are literally plug and play. And we had no choice, but the plug and play last year with the guys yeah. that they were bringing in but now you're actually improving on what you've had over last year. So it's just about continuing to stack the deck, you know, fill in the holes and just improve the roster, the talent level, of the roster incrementally over time. And, you know, we haven't talked about the spring portal yet, but coach prime has mentioned he's not done yet. So I'm again, I don't think we're expecting a, you know, a 60 player exodus again, but there's going to be some transfers, probably some surprises. And we're going to bring in some better football players too. It's yeah. just going to how it's just how it works under coach prime. Well, and I think it's easier to uh, project and get excited about some of these things because we've seen these guys on the field, right? Last year, it was kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, well, this guy was a five-star coming out of high school. Well, he didn't do much at his previous school, so we don't know. But B.J. Green, Chidozi, uh, uh, Wonko have played and been successful. Mm -hmm. um, Samuel Okunlola has played and been successful. These are power five football players that have played and been successful. So it's easier easier to project some improvement there. Um, another guy like DJ McKinney, um, we haven't mentioned yet, this guy, he was not even a starter at Oklahoma State, but he led their corners and tackles, and he played almost 600 snaps as a non-starter. That's insane, right? And so this is these are guys with experience. And so um, let's go with uh, who's kind of a – and maybe a guy we haven't mentioned, but maybe there's a lot of guys that get talked about on this transfer list, you know, a, a LaJonte mm -hmm. Wester or a Will Shepard. Who's a maybe an unsung – uh, transfer like people aren't talking about this guy a lot but you really love him well dj mckinney i think was one until you know recently coach prime you know kind of uh talked him up on well off a few days ago and 
he's really starting to generate some hype. And you kind of, you mentioned it. He kind of did it as a freshman in limited playing time. He's got long arms. He's got great length, good speed. Um, to answer your question, I'm going to go with Torian Carter. Another guy in the trenches, uh, an older guy too. I mean, this is a 22, 23 year old nose tackle. Like that's, we didn't have that last year. You know, had Shane Cokes as an older guy, but he was kind of playing out of position, a little undersized to be playing inside on the defensive line. But now you have a guy that is going to demand double teams, uh, kind of like Chidozi. It's going to just help out the linebackers, just help the flow of the defense, help them help guys find the football uh, quicker if you have two players taking up these big nose tackles and guys on the inside. So um, I, you can't overstate the importance of the trenches enough. I think almost any trench player on either side, um, other than, you know, the guys that you mentioned or we've mentioned, BJ Green, Sam Oak, and Lola, um, you know, Tyler Johnson. I haven't seen much love for him recently. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Khalil Benson's probably going to be in contention to start at right tackle as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can go in the trenches and it just shows how this team exactly has improved over the offseason. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, with a couple guys that, um, you know, I don't know how underrated they are or not, but they, they haven't played a ton. Um, Jalen Wester and Keaton Wade. Now, Wester played yeah. quite a bit at Florida Atlantic, but they need a second linebacker to step up next to Levanta Bentley, right? Uh, we saw last mm -hmm. year um, it was so rough at linebacker that they're moving Trevor Woods up. I don't want to see Trevor Woods at linebacker anymore, and um, I think he's just better as a safety, right? And he's not the size of a linebacker. They need Jalen Wester or Keaton Wade to step up, one of those two guys. And so I'm excited about both those guys because um, I think one of them has the ability. And what we've seen out of Keaton Wade, a little bit of Kentucky, looks pretty impressive. And Jalen Wester, you know, you, you watch some of his film, it's like, okay, that kid can play too. So it's not just his brother. You know, he's not coming here just because of his brother. So um, I think they need one of those two linebackers to step up. And they may not be done at linebacker, but I think one of those two guys needs to have a good spring. Yeah, I think when you look at the roster as it stands right now, uh, linebacker is probably one of those positions that they're going to dip into the portal. I mean, DJ Lundy was a guy that who was expected yep. to come in who played really, really well at Florida State. Uh, he ends up, you know, withdrawing from the portal, returning back to FSU. So I think they're still going to try and, you know, recover from that loss, if you can call it a loss at that point. But Jalen Wester is a guy that I look at, you know, just maybe a slightly undersized at linebacker again to yeah. around 225 pounds, but man, he just flies to the football, see ball, get ball. That's all he knows. Um, and when you have like what I mentioned with the defensive tackles and just the improved off uh, defensive line, just helping the flow of the defense, you know, maybe even fighting off a block and making, getting an arm on a guy at the line scrimmage. That's what, that's the difference between last year or the last two years, really, where they couldn't stop the run and why runs were popping for 10 plus and not being held behind the uh, the first down markers. So um, linebacker is going to be massive. It's a position I would look at definitely this spring. One thing I will add too: these guys aren't going to be impactful this year. We hope <laughs> because we want Shador to be healthy all year, but uh, they've got a couple of transfer quarterbacks in here that, you know, last year it was Shador Sanders, two true freshmen that have, that had never played obviously a snap in college football and then some walk-ons this year. Now you've got a couple of guys that have been at, at FBS programs and you've got Ryan Staub is a little more experienced. I love the backup uh, quarterback position way better right now than I did uh, even in November. Definitely. It's something that needed addressing. I mean, like you said, the plan is that, you know, for two to never come off the field, to not get hurt, to not miss a game, but they've improved the talent behind him now. And Walter Taylor's the guy I look at, you know, Talk about a physical specimen. The guy's like 6'5", 240 pounds. Yeah. Uh, the highlights of him running the football at Vanderbilt are really jaw-dropping because he's a load to tackle. Uh, he only has thrown, I think, 15 career passes, though, but he has been working with Shador's uh, private quarterback coach, Daryl Colbert. So that's something that I'm looking for there. But I got to mention Staub, too. Just what he did when having a full week of preparation against Utah – that really showed what he was capable of more of than his performances against Washington state and Nebraska. Cause he was kind of just thrown into the fire in those right. games. He had a full week, uh, got the game plan from Pat Shermer was able to execute it, got the ball out pretty quickly and found receivers around the field. So I'm excited to see that's really one of the competitions I'm looking forward to watching this spring also. Well, and I know it's early um, things go is still happen, but I love that he's still here. You know, mm -hmm. um, I remember asking coach prime at um, post game at Utah, about uh, Ryan Staub, you know, whether he kind of proved himself as a capable starter. And, and Coach Prime said something about how, yeah, if, if not here, somewhere else. And it's kind of gives that hint of like, oh, yeah, I guess he could leave. But I love that Ryan Staub is still here, uh, meaning he wants to compete with Shador 
and learn and get better. And we'll see, maybe he transfers at the end of the spring. I don't know, but I love that he's still here. Um, but yeah, that, that group is going to be way better. I'd love to see some packages for Walter Taylor, you know, where, you know, some sort of a trick play every now and then where, you know, Shador splits out, but Walter Taylor comes in, takes a snap, you know, maybe a, a, some wildcat type things. Uh, I think that could be fun as well. I mean, you know, the Rick Ross package when they, you know, brought in Bishop and Shane Cox on offense last year yeah. was something that they kind of felt they had to do in order to run the ball and in, in, in short yardage situations. So that's what I look at for Walter Taylor or something like that. I don't know if that's the package that we're still going to have because Sean Lewis isn't the offensive coordinator anymore, obviously. Yeah. But if you're going to just plan on ramming it down their throat, why not put the bigger quarterback in? You know that we're going short yardage anyway. You don't need to use Shador in those situations. So also he's a lefty. I mean, who knows? Maybe you could just flip the entire offense and just kind of changing that dimension too is something worth throwing a trick play package together for him because, you know, anything to kind of get the offense off tilt after Shador's, you know, throwing a ball all around the field. And how much fun would it be if you're on the goal line and you bring in, let's say, Chidozi and Torian Carter as uh, mm-hmm. as blockers, and then you have Walter Taylor uh, running behind him. That could be kind of fun, too. And again, a halt, <laughs> healthy Alton McCaskill. He was a very right. good goal line back mm-hmm. at Houston, too. So he just has this way of finding his way through short yardage situations. So I fully expect this team to be better at running the football. I yeah. don't know how much better. Um, I think we'll have some 100-yard rushers this year. I don't think we're going to see Shador on his back as much. And I don't think he's going to have to be a factor as much, you know, trying to take off downfield and just make things happen with his legs. So um, in an ideal world, that's what we get. Uh, we'll find out. We'll get a glimpse of it this spring here. Now. I'd like to see the team rush for 100 yards, <laughs> let alone individuals, yes. but just yes. get the team up to that number. But, yeah, it is going to be a lot of fun. I know you're uh, heading out to Las Vegas. I just got back from there a few days ago for the women's Pac-12 tournament. You're going to go cover the men's Pac-12 tournament. And, um, you know, so real quick, uh, what are you looking forward to? I know you're more of a Vegas guy than I am, but what are you looking forward to with the Pac-12 men's tournament? Man, I just hope this team is kind of sustaining the level that they've been playing at, you know, winning six games in a row to end the season and saving their tournament hopes, honestly, at the same yeah. time, picking up some road wins uh, during that stretch too. I'd love to see Cody back. Um, I know Pat kind of said that it's a little touch and go. He did practice earlier this week, so there's some good signs there. But, you know, what KJ has done all year, um, he's the type of player, when you look at the these tournaments, when we're in tournament season, it really can come down to one player who takes over. And I think yeah. KJ has shown a lot of that. I mean, he saved them in the second USC game. He's had some massive moments this year. So I'm just hoping the team kind of sustains momentum and, I want to see KJ, if it's possible, reach another level even this March to try and take this t- team to unprecedented heights. Yeah, and I want Tristan to be that kind of second guy with him. You know, Tristan needs to have a big week as well. So he's been a lot more consistent lately yeah, too. He yeah, has. It'll be a lot of fun and a good lead into spring ball, which starts next Monday. Um, next week's gonna be fun because you have the start of spring ball. The women are gonna be in the NCAA tournament, and the men could be starting the NCAA tournament next week as well. So next week could be a lot of fun. After what's been a long off season, I think we're due for a, a fun week next week. What do you think? We deserve this, Brian. <laughs> we absolutely deserve this. Well, you have fun in Vegas. We'll see you out there next week. Thanks, man. Sounds good.